Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is April and in this episode of Thrift Day Transformations, I'm finally transforming a wedding dress. Now this isn't going to be my wedding dress because I'm not getting married anytime soon, but one day I do want to make my own wedding dress. So I thought this would be great practice and hopefully it helps those of you guys out there as well that want to save money by DIYing your own or maybe you guys have an old dress that belonged to your mom or your grandma that you want to transform for yourself then I hope this helps you out. Alright, I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's get started! I thrifted this dress for $13 it's very simple and the material is lightweight. It has some beaded embellishment at the top and around the bottom of the skirt. And the back has a lace-up design. I actually like the halter neckline so I won't be changing that. But I do want the skirt to be more fit and flare. I don't really like the flower beading so the first thing I did was seam rip all of it off. The beads actually stained the dress a little. So you can still see the shape of the flower in some spots, but overall it's not that bad. Next, to make the dress more fit and flare, I wanted to hug around my hips and thighs more, so I took it in at the princess seams and at the side seams. To create more flare to the skirt, I'll be adding godets. I had to purchase additional fabric and got lucky because my local fabric store had something in the same exact shade. The only difference is that the new material is a lot heavier and not as shiny as the material of the dress, but I think it'll work out fine. If you have a dress like mine with princess seams that go all the way down the dress, all you have to do is seam rip up to where you desire the flare to begin. I started mine a couple inches above my knees. I have a total of 7 seams that I seam ripped open, 2 princess seams in the front, 2 side seams, 2 princess seams in the back, and 1 center back seam. This means that I'll need to add 7 new panels into the skirt. To add the panels, cut large triangle pieces that reach the bottom of the skirt and place them in between each open seam. Here, I'm just demonstrating and testing it out on pieces of muslin first before cutting it out of the actual fabric. The size of the triangle I went with was 1 8 of a circle. I first marked out a quarter circle shape onto the new fabric, starting from the corner. The length should extend past the skirt so that you can trim it later to match the rest of the skirt. Then cut the quarter circle in half so it's now an eighth of a circle and this will be the size of the godet that I'll be adding to the skirt. Since there are 7 seams I need to fill, I need 7 of these pieces. Now we can face them right sides together in between the open seams and sew them in place. It was actually easier for me to sew them without pinning them down first and you'll also want to start at the top corner, blending it into the original seam above. Since the skirt is more flared now, it needs some more body underneath to help fill out the shape. So I gathered some stiff tulle and sewed it onto the lining to help poof it out. I gathered two pieces for the lower level of the tulle skirt. Next, I sewed the gathered piece onto a shorter strip of tulle. And after that, I gathered the top tier to fit around the lining skirt and sewed it down. I actually wish I added at least two more layers to the petticoat because the skirt wasn't as poofy as I wanted it to be in the end, but I only bought five yards and would have probably needed 10 yards to make it even poofier. Or one of those hoop skirts to go underneath.
The halter neck needed to be a little tighter on me, so I shortened the straps and sewed hook and eyes to attach the band together. Lastly, to make the hem stand out and look crisp, I'll be sewing horsehair braid around the bottom. This is a fine dressmaking technique, and since it's only my second time using this, I had a very stressful time figuring it out. I'll be sharing my mistakes with you guys along the way, and hopefully you can learn from them. First off, if your skirt has a curved hem like mine, you'll need to sew a basting stitch along the very top to manipulate the shape later. My first mistake was sewing the basting stitch too far from the edge because later when I tried to gather it, it was causing a ripple along the top edge. So I had to sew a new row of stitching closer to the edge. Next, I pinned the horsehair braid along the hem to figure out how much I would need and cut it to fit the skirt. My second problem was that after I cut the horsehair braid to fit it, I went back to measure it around the skirt and the horsehair braid was now too short. Since horsehair braid can stretch, you have to be very careful to not pull or scrunch it up. Next time, I think I would have sewed it all around the hem first to make sure it reaches the other end before trimming the rest off. To sew the horsehair braid on, lay it on the right side of the hem and sew it down. I recommend sewing it at least at a quarter inch because I first sewed it too close to the edge and it did not work out. You also want to add a strip of ribbon over where the ends meet so that it doesn't scratch. After the horsehair braid is sewn right sides together along the hem, flip it over to the wrong side and press the edges down so that the horsehair braid is up against the edge. Then top stitch the hem along the very edge. Since the skirt is curved, I have to pull in the basting stitch I sewed earlier to fit the shape of the skirt. I found it easier to pull as I hand sewed instead of fitting and pinning it all down first because there's just so much skirt that it would have took a very long time. What I didn't pay attention to enough was the rippling of the skirt between the hem and where I was hand sewing. You need to make sure that the skirt is laying flat so when you hand sew, there won't be any ripples or puckers in between. I was just so focused on fitting the horsehair braid and hand sewing that I didn't double check to make sure that the skirt was laying flat, which is a bummer because the hem could have looked so much better. I probably would just undo all my hand sewing to fix it, but the thought of that kills me because it took forever. Once I finish hand sewing the horsehair braid down with an invisible stitch, I'm done with the dress. Here is the final transformation. perfect but overall I love how this transformation turned out. I also want to add more layers to the petticoat later so that the godets don't fall in so much. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments if you want to see more wedding dress transformations. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more DIY fashion and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!